to talk to you today and kind of take this theme that we've been talking about and extend it into something that most people don't necessarily have a positive feeling about, and that is hacking. And the word hack has, is a very charged word. It, as a noun, it's typically used to describe a person who's trying to somehow sell some goods or services in a very nefarious way. They're trying to pass off as something that they're not. Um, but as an action, hacking is extremely important and powerful. Uh, you probably immediately think of hacking into computer systems or hacking into banks. That is not the only definition of the word hack. Um, in the dictionary, the other definition right below it is creating software for enjoyment. And that's what I want to focus on. And it's not just software that you are also making for enjoyment. It's, this can be applied to anything. This is bringing people together in a room and turning it into something alive. So um, the first four-way we've had into this uh, was an event called Hack for Reno. This was the first civic hackathon that happened here in the city of Reno, and it was allowing developers to come together and take open data, publicly accessible data about our parks, about the food trucks that are in the city, about all of the financial information about the city, and trying to take that raw information and make apps and services that make that information useful to everyday people in the city of Reno. Um, and hackathons have become a huge success and really popular around the world. They're allowing people to come together and make things that didn't exist before that weekend. And these events go anywhere from 24 hours to 36 hours. There's whole week-long hackathons that take place in the offices of Facebook and GitHub. And these events bring people together like no other. So when we, did, when we set out to do Hack for Reno, we decided, you know, most of this stuff happens behind closed doors. People are building apps, and the process of designing these things and implementing them is really not something that you see happen. And so when we did Hack for Reno, we're like, okay, we're doing an open data hackathon. How open can we make this? And so we actually chose to do it in the open. We took it completely open, and we decided to have um, 70 developers outside of the Pioneer Center right across from the courthouse, uh, right down the street from City Hall. And we set up a bunch of tents, and we took a bunch of people who normally, you know, traditionally you have that perception of a bunch of people working in dark rooms, building apps, um, and we took them out into the sunlight. And <laughs> lots of sunscreen, lots of tents. And we gave them some caffeine. We gave them this facilitating environment. We set up internet, very, very important. Um, so that they could build these things together, they could collaborate. And then we took it a step further and we decided, you know, this is an open community event. Let's see if we can actually plan this in the open. And so we took all of the things that we need to do to plan Hack for Reno, all of the different, from sponsors to volunteers, and we made it wide open. We told everybody, you know, let's see how we can organize this as a group. And that happened. We ended up with uh, 70 participants, over another probably 30 volunteers, sponsors, that really made this into not just an event run by a couple people, but an event run by the community. And so the word hack, again, is extremely charged. It's an extremely charged word. People tend to think of it as a bad thing. Um, and so we actually went ahead and just went for it. We said Reno is being hacked. And this sign caused so many people to honk their horn as they drove by. Um, people are stopping quizzically to wonder, you know, what exactly is going on here. <laughs> and we couldn't have planned this any better because the wine walk happened on the same day. <laughs> so hundreds of people drinking downtown, walking through developers. And we went even further, and something that we couldn't have planned again, Occupy Reno decided to march right down Virginia Street, um, down to Wingfield Center. So we also brought out the geeks, the builders of apps, we brought these people out and they, as soon as we announced it, we had people flocking, coming out of the woodwork, people we did not know existed in Reno to come build these applications. These are things, again, that they're doing in behind closed doors, but they want people to see what they're making. They want people to take part in it. And so we have some, some professors from the university, we had journalism students, we had people from the city, we had developers, all of these people who normally don't get to take part in the development of these applications coming together and making something happen. And so that concept of the, even the, the library in Alexandria, these places can be created, they're not necessarily permanent places. You can create a temporary space, add some shared resources, add that catalyst and see what happens with some change. So, 
One of the biggest things is that when we kicked this off, this event was 24 hours long. And so we started at noon and we went all throughout the night. And these are the kinds of faces that you see at a hackathon, intense staring, um, some interesting language throughout the day as <laughs> different challenges come up, and really focusing on how can we take a problem that these developers and designers have found in the community, find some data that is publicly available and transform it into an app. Some of these applications that were made were taking all of the events that happened in Reno and put it on one master calendar. Um, taking things like um, the food truck locations and putting it on an app so you can find the nearest food truck at any given point in time. And this is a very interdisciplinary um, event. It's taking designers, um, setting up little pop-up shops like the Chelsea's Design Clinic. Um, we had professors who have a lot of experience in specific areas. Uh, and then we had the people who actually put the data in in the first place who could answer questions and help find new data if we needed it. And then the sun set and day turns to night. And this is when things got really interesting. Uh, people spilling out of bars and clubs, walking down Virginia Street, uh, many of them thinking that we were physically hacking Reno um, at the point, <laughs> in which case I don't think we would have set up shop outside uh, right next to the Pioneer Center. Um, and as we were going throughout the night, the work continued. And this was the best spectacle of all, just seeing all these glowing monitors and seeing people working on something that they were super passionate about. And these events aren't just about making something. These people, in some cases, are um, very novice. They just started making apps th on that very first day. And so they're learning from it. They're seeing these people that are uh, in the community, and they're learning from them. Um, these are things that they get to experiment with that they don't get to normally work on in their everyday job as well. And so you can start to take some of the newer technologies that maybe your boss won't let you use in the office and see if you can't make a mobile app out of it. Um, this is uh, Go Outside. This is the team that ended up winning uh, Hack for Reno. And so there is a competition element to it. And the reason for that is it, it helps to add constraint. So with constraints, you can start to be free a little bit because you can only do so many things in 24 hours. So you have to say, you know, is this really important? Let's throw it out. Let's focus on this because this is going to have more impact. And this team uh, did a, an app that allows you to see everything that you can do outside for free in the city and in the area of northern Nevada. Um, and the team was comprised of designers and developers from a whole bunch of agencies in town. This wasn't a team that just showed up and, and decided to make something. They did order shirts and try to sport some, some, uh, some morale there and get people together. Um, but this team, you know, no sleep. They did not sleep the entire night. Um, you would find some people going into corners and trying to take a nap for 30 minutes and get back to it. Um, and we did lose a couple people in the night. So it was, it was a very, uh, you know, people went home. They didn't come back the next day. But it's something that brings camaraderie to the people that, that participate. Um, and so this went on throughout the entire night. And people were designing apps, building things that would change how people interact with city government, how they interact with their community. And then the sun came up. And after nearly 18 hours of work, there were still smiles on their faces. It got a little cold in the night. Um, and <laughs> you end up with just sheer joy. These people have kind of almost like a summer camp. You've spent this time together creating things. And when you create something out of nothing, you have this ownership of it that you can't get from just buying something off the shelf. And so with about six hours remaining, all the teams are starting to wrap up their work. And all of this culminates into a celebration of sorts. It's, now that we've, everyone's been working on things, um, you know, you're so focused on your app, it's time to share what you made, how you made it, who your team is, so that not only do we leave this weekend knowing that we made something, but we also now know people that we didn't know before. Um, and we've seen people go from these events to actually start whole companies, um, to end up employing other people, finding uh, talent. It's something that Reno, we've always been looking for. How do you find talent uh, in, in such a, you know, we have a lot of telecommuters here and things like that. How do you find the talent? These events um, attract that because people really want to get out and make something. So um, what we found was that during the day, there was a lot of these grimaces and intense glares. And during the presentations, people get, to get, get very passionate about what they built and very you know, focused on how they made it and want to share that with everybody. So when we look at this model of taking an open space like the Pioneer Plaza, which is almost always empty, and adding an element to it, adding some internet to it, adding some smart people, you can incite some change. You can start to build things that make a difference. And so all of these apps, we had 70 different developers make over 17 applications. Um, they're all open source. All of the code is available for other cities 
to take a look at them to create you know, even their own event as well, because all that planning had taken place in the open as well. And we can take this model and apply it to almost anything. Even this gathering here is taking a space and filling it with smart people and trying to see how ideas can rub together to make something new. And so this is a collaboration between students and professors and professionals that are actively working in, in this industry. And you start to see a big change in what happens with um, learning and teaching because this is not a formal classroom. It's an organic way of learning. And some of these people have gone on to take some people under their wing as apprentices and actually work with uh, teenagers who are wanting to get into video games and building um, apps and actually start to teach them how to make apps for mobile phones. Um, and this kind of environment is, is extremely important for that. So we've done this a few times. So Hack for Reno happened two years ago, and then we just did it again at the De La Mer Science uh, and Engineering Library, which was a little bit more behind closed doors. But we brought it into another creative space to really try to, you know, uh, accelerate what was happening at De La Mer. And we found another whole group of people who we didn't know existed in Reno that wanted to build things. And so we've been moving Hack for Reno around each year to try to expose more people to it. And uh, we've done this in a number of spaces. This is the first Reno Collective in the Cathexis building on, on 2nd Street. Again, big physical spaces, filling it with ideas and people and making things happen. And these, some of these are a little bit more professional, like WordCamp, bringing together an actual conference of people around a shared interest and creating that community of practice uh, around a specific topic, a specific programming language, uh, art, design. It doesn't have to be about technology. And we, can, we have the technology to bring in people from all over the world. There's no reason why we can't collaborate with people in Germany or in Australia, um, such as at WordCamp. We had speakers that couldn't make it, but we really wanted to have them uh, as a part of the event. Um, and we've done even smaller events. This was uh, Rena Wired, which was organized by a, a local designer in town. And it looks like a mess in this photo. There's a lot of stuff going on. It was 24 hours of just laptops and designers. And what they did with Rena Wired was that in 24 hours, they rebranded, redesigned uh, every element of a nonprofit in 24 hours. A new website, a mobile responsive website, new prints, video, uh, everything, and they had it all printed, all produced, all launched by 8 a.m. the next day. And the client, this was an amazing event to watch because the client didn't necessarily understand why they deserved this. They, every time they would show what they made, the client would break out in tears. And it was just amazing to watch because they really did deserve it for the work that they're doing, and now they have all these great assets that allow them to do their mission better. And so this event happened at our, our current Reno Collective, which is a co-working space downtown. And this is the kind of things that we do on weekends. We pack the place with people, and we see what we can make. And that's the model here. We take a physical space, something that's empty. This is the schoolhouse over on uh, Mill and Liberty Street, right downtown. And this area doesn't get used. This is a city building. It hardly gets used. And we applied the same model. Put smart people in the space, see what happens. Um, this was Startup Weekend. This is where some of the, hopefully, future Reno companies will come from. Uh, in 54 hours, we had about 20 teams of people creating new companies and pitching those ideas at the end of it. And uh, this doesn't apply to just Reno. This applies to the whole world. So the last, uh, last weekend, this actually happened, the International Space Challenge with NASA. Um, we broke a world record with NASA for 9,500 uh, participants of a hackathon happening all over the world, including low Earth, uh, low Earth orbit. Uh, and what we ended up having was we were building um, something with a team in Australia uh, who was up on the board the entire time. And we were actually working on driving underwater submarines that are in San Francisco from in Reno. And the really cool thing about this is that the idea was we should be able to drive this thing from anywhere, Australia, Reno, wherever that might be. And we had amazing talent that showed up for that event and we're working with people from around the world to make that happen. And so my kind of uh, you know, mission for everyone here and something to think about is that I want you to think, like, not to keep calm and carry on, if you will, is to think about what it is that you can do to get a bunch of people together. If you have a specific interest, find a place. It doesn't have to be permanent. It can exist for a weekend. It can exist for a day. And I encourage you to get excited, and I want you to try to get excited and make things. Thank you. Thank you.